I received this letter in the mail the other day. My brother sent me these news articles from his local paper. And I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit upset at him for sending me this stuff, you see. Let me show you why I say that. You see, right here is the letter that he sent to me. You can see the date there is the 21st of August, 2014. And this news article is dated August the 15th of 2014. And here's this big Franklin Graham revival. So, brother, I'm really upset with you because you sent this to me past the date of when I could have gone to this wonderful, you know, faith celebration here. I mean, I would have just dropped everything, driven, you know, from Maine the whole way down to Pittsburgh there, you know, to go to this. I just was so excited, and I found out that it's already been done and gone, and I just ruined my day. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you know. It's it just, I have to get a little laughing once in a while, but, it, you know, Obviously, I'm joking about that. You couldn't have paid me to walk into this place here. I mean, just ugh, bad. But uh, let me show you some of the stuff here in this article. It's in the living section here. Celebrating faith. Franklin Graham at a festival of hope earlier this year in whatever that is, the capital of the Eurasian country of Georgia. Graham's Festival of Hope brings together dozens of denominations. Hey, hey, isn't that wonderful? And, of course, you have this effeminate uh, Michael W. Smith down here, you know, kind of a whatever there. But um, there's your schedule of events here as well, telling you where it's going to be in the musical performers and everything else. Here's the, here's the next page. This is where it gets kind of interesting. Um, brings denominations together there, and here you have these Christian band here, of course, and the people, you know. I mean, you know it's spiritual when you can raise your hands and all this stuff. And there you have the Charlie Daniels band, which, whatever there, but let me show you this. I found this to be very, very interesting. Look, let's look at the denominations that are represented here by this fine festival. Here you have the Reverend David Pecking, pastor of St. Elizabeth and Seton Parish, Carnegie, agrees that the festival is an extraordinary opportunity for churches, which is why the Roman Catholic Diocese of Pittsburgh is involved in most aspects of its planning. Bishop David Zubik will give the opening prayer on August 17th. The Knights of Columbus is providing ushers for all three nights as well. The secret order there among Catholics, basically they're kind of like their Masonic Lodge, so to speak. People that swear their, you know, these men that swear their allegiance to the Pope, you know, and they're going to be the ushers for the event. And of course, you know, if you know anything at all about Billy Graham and his whole evangelistic association, they've been pro-Catholic since day one. Okay. He meets with the Pope. He's good friends with the Pope and Pope, Pope, Pope all the time. And they've been having Catholic priests at these crusades in the past. It's It's gone on for years. But I... Uh, Let's continue here. This is where it gets kind of funny. For those of you out there that actually think that the Catholics are interested in ecumenical dialogue and all this other stuff, and we're all, we respect all faith traditions. No, they don't. They're still up to the same old Dark Ages tricks that they always have been. Look at this. Most importantly, Catholics will participate in the festival itself, attending, praying, enjoying the music and preaching, and helping those who at the festival experience the gift or revival of faith. Pecking says... The diocese will have immediate follow-up every night at Epiphany Church next to Consul Energy Center, where priests will be available for confession and fellowship, says Helen Paharick, Associate General Secretary of the Diocese. So, you, you know, got a Catholic church right next door. Let's just go on over there. We'll get you signed up. Isn't that nice of them? But check this hypocrisy out. Look at this. It is powerful and necessary for the world to see Christians of different denominations working and praying together, she says. To take part in the festival, each denomination must serve the common good, and look at this, and not recruit for their own congregation. Like the Catholics are doing? Don't you just love the hypocrisy there? I mean, you know, if you want to be part of this wonderful festival you can you're just not allowed to recruit for your own denomination but we're going to have the catholic church right next door open for people to come over and have do the confessional and fellowship with our priests 
How nice. Oh, we're, we respect other denominations. No, they don't. Catholicism is about one thing and one thing only, and that is control. If they can't get you as one of their little spin-off daughters, the daughters of the harlot church, if they can't get you in one of them, then, you know, if they can't get you in one that they control, I should say, then they'll force you and say, well, you can come and be part of this thing here and everything. We all get along, but uh, just don't try to bring anybody into your system there. Absolute hypocrisy. It's just disgusting. So, just more nuttiness to prove that we are living in the end times. Uh, Franklin Graham, don't give assent to anything Billy Graham is part of Billy Graham Evangelistic Association or Franklin Graham or whatever else. Uh, just stay as far away from this pathetic, satanic system as you can. All right. Flee from it.